I usually review serious papers here, but this time we're going to review some humorous papers. And the first paper is titled Stopping GAN Violence Generative Unadversarial Networks. While the costs of human violence have attracted a great deal of attention from the research community, the effects of network on network violence popularized by generative adversarial networks have yet to be addressed. In this work, we quantify the financial, social, spiritual, cultural, grammatical, and dermatological impact of this aggression and address the issue by proposing a more peaceful approach, which we term generative unadversarial networks, or GUNs for short. Ironically, they propose to use guns to stop the GAN violence. Under this framework, we simultaneously train two models, a generator G that does its best to capture whichever data distribution it feels it can manage, and a motivator M that helps G to achieve its dream. Fighting is strictly verboten, and both models evolve by learning to respect their differences. Our work builds on a rich history of carefully argued position papers published as anonymous YouTube comments, which prove that the optimal solution to non-violence is more guns. Authors are listed according to the degree to which their home nation underperformed at the 2016 European Football Championships. Baby is babbling. Oh, they have a figure here. Figure 1. The proposed unadversarial training protocol. The generator G proposes samples and in return receives acknowledgments and praise from the motivator. As a direct consequence of the sense of teamwork fostered by our optimization scheme, synergy abounds. The key insight behind generative adversarial networks, commonly referred to as GANs, gangs, or capones, depending on sources of counterfeit currency, is to pit one model against another in a gladiatorial quest for dominance. In this section, we subject the GUN framework to a rigorous qualitative experimental evaluation by training unadversarial networks on MNIST. Rather than evaluating the model error rate or probability on withheld test data, we adopt a less confrontational metric, opportunities for improvement. Inspired by the Finnish education system, we do not test our models during the first formative epochs of development. A quantitative comparison with two other popular <laughs> generative approaches have been withheld from publication to respect their privacy of the models involved. However, we are able to reveal that GUN had by far the most opportunities for improvements. We observed a sharp increase in performance once we all agreed that the network was doing well. By contrasts, contrasts, I don't know if this is a typo or intentional, the adversarial nature of standard GAN methodologies usually elicits a fight or flight behavior which can result in vanishing gradients and runaway losses. Let's see what they have here. In this work we have shown that network on network violence is not only unethical but also is unnecessary. Our experiments demonstrate that happy networks are productive networks, laying the groundwork for advances in motivational machine learning. Indeed, unadversarial learning is an area rife with opportunities for further development. In future work, we plan to give an expanded treatment of important related subjects, including nurtural gradients and K dearest neighbors. Let's see what they say in the footnotes. While we have exhaustively explored the topic of machine learning guns, we leave the more controversial topic of machine gun learning to braver researchers. This is hilarious. Oh, they have author biographies here too. Sebastian holds a self-taught liberal arts degree and passed his driver's license exam with highest honors. All right, let's, let's move on to the next paper. The next paper is titled Dataset Selection. It was published in the Journal of Machine Learning Gossip in 2003. It's a pretty old paper, but some of the points it makes are still relevant today. So the main idea in the paper is that even not so good methods can be shown to be significantly better than others when the datasets are selected the right way. In the introduction, they say, with this article, we offer a brand new approach that allows you to present your algorithm in a much more principled and rigorous way than was possible before. Many researchers, especially those publishing in prestigious conferences such as NIPS, which is called NIRIPS today, or ICML have tried to show when their algorithms are better, in some sense, than some other given set of algorithms. To do this, they have employed techniques of dataset selection. 
It is strange, then, that learning theorists, as they call themselves, over the past 50 years have concentrated on model selection problem and not the dataset selection problem, which is what people actually do. They make a bunch of proofs here, lots of equations, and when I read through papers, I usually substitute equations with a blah and look back at them later, if I need to. In the experiment section, they say, we proceed to prove our methodology by showing we can always find a good solution, even for bad algorithms. And they say, we will now reiterate what we said before. We repeat the abstract and the introduction. The problem with any unwritten law is that you don't know where to go to erase it. This is the same for other matters, by the way. In the conclusion section, they say they would iterate what they said before in the abstract and the introduction, but then they also say they won't, and in the end, they kind of do. And here they say, central to our research is the idea of improving the presentation of algorithms in the literature and to make them more appealing. We defined a new notion of capacity for datasets and derived a methodology for manipulating it. The experiments show that even for not so good algorithms, you can show that they are significantly better than all other algorithms. The message is powerful and may not be understood at a first reading, so we say it plainly to avoid confusion. We implore all researchers to dig out their old failed algorithms and turn them into successful papers. We hope that the community learns from this breakthrough and applies our methodology in their future research so they will not be left behind because our algorithms will far outperform theirs. Surprisingly, this paper was cited 24 times in other papers. It's not a lot for a serious paper, but still, good for a paper that was not meant to be taken seriously. The next paper is a short one but takes infinitely long to read, which is kind of the purpose. It's titled, How to Keep a Graduate Student Busy. We propose a method for indefinitely occupying certain graduate students that requires only a finite amount of input information. Some graduate students are incapable of understanding recursion. Such students need to be kept busy. <laughs> to achieve this, simply apply the method described by Stansifier in reference one. Let's take a look. Reference one, how to keep a graduate student busy by Paul Stansifier. And we are back to square one. We propose a method for indefinitely occupying many unbearable hours later. All right, that was pretty much it for today. If you would like to see me review more parody papers like these, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you next time. Chicken, 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 chicken. Chicken 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 ch